Hi guys, Refashioned Hippie here. What we're gonna talk about today is how to get free inventory. If any of you know me already from my channel or from Instagram where I'm at Refashion Hippie, you'll know that I'm a full-time mom and a full-time reseller. And I would say about 90% of the inventory that I sell, I get for completely free. Um, this is where I'm pulling most of my information from today. This is the book that I wrote about how to be a great clothing reseller. It is available on Amazon as both a physical copy and a Kindle download. If you have whatever their special Kindle thing is, you can read it for free. I really just want this information out there, which is why I'm making videos like this. And for anybody who's like me, I'm a skipper on YouTube. I don't just sit and watch straight through. I'm gonna have big titles on the bottom of the screen. So you can just skip until you find the relevant information for you. Um, if you have listened to any of my advice so far, you've probably heard me say it over and over, tell people what you do. That is my biggest piece of advice for you today. We'll get into more nitty gritty specifics as we go along, but first tell people what you do. So second piece of advice I'm gonna give you is something you've probably heard before, but that is start in your own home. Um, there's a lot of free inventory sitting in your home, I guarantee it. And once you sort of Marie Kondo it, if you get together like all of your clothing, just a big pile of every single piece of clothing you own, it's easier to go through and pick out the stuff that you don't need anymore, that you don't wear anymore, that's never gonna fit you, that you just don't want, that you don't like, all the new tag stuff that you never had an occasion to wear, that can be the stuff that finances the beginning of your reselling journey or supplements it as you go along. And it doesn't have to just be clothing. Like if you put together every single spoon that you own, I guarantee you got a lot of spoons. Like it's it's weird stuff like that. So starting in your own home, second piece of advice, probably something you guys have heard before. The third piece of advice I have for you guys is less a specific thing, um, but something that I have found really important is how you talk to people. Once you start sharing, hey, I'm a reseller. It can feel really embarrassing to say, can I have your old stuff? Can I have your old clothes? It doesn't have to be. You should be proud of what you do and you should be proud to share it with other people. So the first thing that you can tell people when you say, hey, I'm a reseller, tell them your story. Because if you just go up to someone and say, hey, can I have that? It sounds weird. It sounds really, really weird, right? And it feels weird to say it. But if you go up to someone and say, hi, my name is Maggie. Um, you know, I had a difficult pregnancy with my daughter and when I realized that I just couldn't keep working, I had to stay home and just be pregnant for a little while, I found reselling. It was something fun that I enjoyed doing. And then when I had my daughter and the pandemic hit, I felt like, how can I, how can I put her in daycare and go back to work with everything going on? And how can I leave this little baby? This is my precious baby. So uh, my husband and I talked and I started reselling full time. I fully invested into it. And fortunately, my husband makes enough to cover our day-to-day -day expenses. So everything that I make in reselling goes into a college fund for my daughter. So that hopefully, if I stay on budget, <laughs> by the time she turns 18, I will be able to pay in cash for all of her college expenses. And if she decides not to go to college, hey, maybe she has an amazing wedding, maybe she has a down payment for a house. That's what I do. That's my reselling journey. And my daughter is my why. And when you share that with people, they tend to want to help. Especially if what you're going to be asking them for is a service to that person. Because when you take bags of clothing that have just been sitting in somebody's house, they are happy. They're happy to get rid of it. <laughs> They're happy. I Every single person that I picked up from, and I'm sorry, you can see how distracting my glasses are there. Every single person that I've picked up from has been so happy they have thanked me. They thank me for coming to get the clothing that I make a living off of. I have a neighbor who lives a couple doors down. I told her my story. I told her about my daughter and she gave me two brand new coach bags with the tags still on them that she was like, oh, somebody gave me these for Christmas. I have so many bags. I don't want them anymore. I would love to help your daughter. That was amazing. <laughs> I mean, that was amazing. And I got about a, a hundred bucks just sitting there, right there, from her house. But she thanked me for picking them up. So the way you talk to people is incredibly important. If you share your story, if you share, this is why I do what I do, they are much more likely to help you. And it's a nicer interaction than just, hi, can I have your stuff? 
can I have it? I want it. Cause that feels weird. Um, also absolutely share the environmental factors of what we do as a reseller. Every piece that you give a new home is huge. And again, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, if you guys have followed me at all on Instagram, you know, a single pair of jeans can take 2000 gallons of water to produce. So if somebody buys a pair of jeans from you instead of H&M, you just save 2000 gallons of water. Absolutely. And you can pat yourself on the back for that. A t-shirt can require 12,000, yeah, sorry, 1200 gallons of water. Same thing. So if somebody donates a t-shirt to you that they don't want anymore and you sell it, that person has helped the environment. And in this time where we are all so aware of all the crazy stuff going on in the environment and the crazy stuff going on in the world, if you can take something off somebody's hand and make them feel like they've done a wonderful thing, they're not only helping you, they're helping the local economy and they're helping their planet, they're going to want to give you more and they're going to want to tell people about you. And the third thing that we just touched on a little bit is thank people. Thank them constantly. Anyone who's donated to you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're helping my daughter. You're helping the local economy. You're helping the planet. Constantly thank them. And if you think you've thanked somebody enough, thank them twice more. Uh, this sounds like crazy advice, but seriously, you cannot overthink somebody. Uh, never in my life. Have I had somebody be like, okay, I get it, geez. No, people love being thanked. People love being told that what they're doing is good. They love feeling like they're making a difference. And just the physicality of helping to carry a bag and put it in your car makes somebody feel good. And it's a very different kind of feeling than going to a Goodwill and dropping off a bag of clothing in a trash bag in an empty location. Because then their clothing feels like trash, right? It feels like trash. They don't want it. They put it in a trash bag. They're getting rid of it. The same as you do with an empty can of soda. But if you're able to tell them this piece you're giving me, this has so much value because this is going to be helping my daughter, our local community and the planet. You're preserving the value that that person feels that piece has. Think about all the clothing you have. I mean, really, we we put so much emotion into our purchases like my wedding dress i love my wedding dress it has hung in a closet for five years but it's gonna stay there i'm not getting rid of it it's my wedding dress right it's a piece of clothing what is it's a piece of clothing but i have this huge emotional investment in it and that is something that people feel very very strongly the pieces that they have chosen to surround themselves with are a part of their identity so if you can maintain that value for them they're gonna to wanna to help you. And all of my donators, that's how they feel. It's different putting in a trash bag, dropping it off at a yellow bin on the side of the road like garbage. But if you can give them that personal touch of thank you, you're helping, you're having a huge impact on my life, community, and our planet. And three times, every time. I say it three times every time. It makes a huge difference. So just how you talk to people is huge. And that's probably my biggest takeaway. Um, so here's the different ways you can present yourself. And I have to put my glasses back on because I can't read. So uh, you can create your own Facebook ad asking for clothing, pretty much including all the information that we just went over. Here's my why, here's what I do, here's the environmental factor, and here's how to contact me. I do this all the time and I get stuff almost all the time. Um, it's especially effective, I find, you can always make a, a Facebook marketplace ad, but if you post something on your personal page or if you post something to like a community page, like we have one for our neighborhood, that's usually effective. Or even just if there's a, if there's a group like your, your kid's elementary school and they're saying like, hey, it's Earth Week. What do people want to do for Earth Week? And you say, oh, actually, I have this little business. You'll get a huge response. You can also look for lots on Facebook. A lot of people will post clothing that they're giving away and the only sort of charge that you have to pay is going to pick it up. But me, I'm a stay-at-home mom, so I have the ability to be like, oh, I see something on Facebook. I'm going to get my car and go right now. Um, that's huge for me. Uh, a lot of my clothing comes from Facebook and 
you know, the downside of that is that you can't always pick what comes in. You know, what you get is what you get. But hey, if you go through it and keep five things and give the rest to Goodwill, that's still five things that you wouldn't have had otherwise. That's money in your pocket you wouldn't have to spend. Um, you can cre also create swap events in your community. So I have a three-year-old, um, although she looks like a five-year-old, so we're constantly going through clothes. So I have a lot of like girls' baby clothes that I don't need anymore. I don't need them and I don't want them. Um, but somebody who just found out they're gonna have a girl might really like those clothes. So if you create a swap event in whatever is your local community, your church, your school group, wherever you are, you can take all of that stuff that you don't want, and it doesn't have to be clothing. You know, you can take housewares, you can take whatever, and just swap with people. And an added bonus of this is if you let people know in the beginning, hey, I'm a reseller, I'm, I'm happy to be getting rid of this stuff. If there's anything left over at the end of the event that you don't want, here's the table that you can just leave it at. Because if people bring things to a swap event, they don't want it anymore. They, they did all the work of going through their closets, going through their house, packing it up in a box, putting it in the car, driving where you are, taking it out, making it look good, talking to people. They don't want all that work to be done for nothing. So you'll probably end up with a lot of extra pieces at the end of that event, in addition to the pieces that you wanted, that you went in and you swapped for. And if you let people know in the beginning, no money's going to go, no money's going to exchange hands, people are fine with that. People are just fine with that. And again, you're doing a service to people in your local community. And right now with all the COVID stuff going on, people want to be meeting new people. So if you create a space where that's possible, awesome. Plus added bonus, you get to talk up your business all day to people who clearly like to shop. Uh, third thing you can do, this one, I am a raccoon. That is my spirit animal. I am proud to say it. I don't mind driving around. Uh, on Saturday and Sunday afternoons to locations at the end of uh, yard sales and saying, hey, I'm a reseller. Can I take this stuff off your hands? And I've had a lot of people say yes. I actually met a very nice woman. Uh, she ended up giving me six very full trash bags of um, plus size women's clothing because she said she'd been working really hard to slim down and just it didn't fit her anymore. All that stuff didn't fit her anymore. She was happy to just see it go. And I offered to buy it. I said, I, I can buy whatever you have left at the end of your yard sale. And she was like, no, 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 just take it. Just take it. And I felt so bad because I was like squishing it into my car and my daughter was like, mm -hmm. but it was like, nope, mommy's taking this home. That's it. So that was a great day for me. Um, but I've driven around to a lot of yard sales and I said, hey, this is my business. I run rebelgirlthrift.com. Um, 20% of the proceeds that we make go to Sanctuary Village, a nonprofit that's building tiny house communities for the city of Philadelphia. If you have any leftover stuff, can I take it? And sometimes people say yes, sure. Sometimes they say no. Sometimes I will go to a yard sale, look through it, and if it's decent stuff, I'll say, can I buy in bulk whatever you have left? We can agree on a price. Usually people say yes, because same principle, they don't want it in their house anymore. They went through all this trouble, they want it gone. And a lot of people, if you've ever done a yard sale, you know, their plan is we'll sell what we can and then whatever it doesn't sell, we'll just drop off at a Goodwill, which is why Goodwills have such busy, busy, busy weekends. Uh, because a lot of people are just like, I don't want it anymore. If I couldn't sell it, I want it gone. So again, it can feel a little weird, but you're doing a service for people. You're doing a service for people who want this stuff out of their lives. And if you can make money and if they can feel like they've done good for you, all good everybody wins. Last thing, I have not personally tried this, but I know a lot of people do. Um, you can set up a commission system. So you can tell a neighbor, you know, I sell on eBay. So here's what we'll do. I'll look through your stuff. I'll go through the work. I'll post it. I'll have an inventory system so that I know it's yours. And if it sells, I'll keep 60%, you get 40%. And anything that doesn't sell in three months, you have options. You can either just donate it to me. You don't have to worry about it. You can come pick it up. Um, or I can, you know, bulk buy it from you, whatever, whatever your deal is. You can create an inventory system and that way you have inventory coming in. You have commission going out, but you have not paid for those pieces. You are getting money for your time. You're getting money for the clothing, but you have not had to pay that neighbor for those pieces. 
Again, I personally haven't done this just because, I mean, oof, I'm not gonna show you how much I have in my basement, but I get a lot of donations from my neighbors. My neighbors have been very kind to my business. So I haven't needed a commission system and it can get a little headachey, um, which is why it's my last tip. It's not the one I most highly recommend, but there are a lot of ways to get free inventory. And I'm just gonna wrap it up now. Number one tip again, tell people what you do. People want to help you, especially family and friends, but even strangers, they want to see you succeed. And if they can help with that, they will. Plus, once again, there are environmental factors. Somebody is helping you, somebody is helping the local economy, and somebody is helping the planet when they help you. And don't feel weird about being a reseller. Being a reseller is great. You are performing a service for your community. You are taking trash pieces and giving them new loving homes. Be proud of what you do and be proud to tell people what you do. And the people who think you're some weird little dumpster raccoon, screw them, I'm a weird little dumpster raccoon and I'm super happy about it. I love what I do. I love this business. It's let me stay home with my daughter. It, let me, it lets me make money to provide her with a future. It lets me help our planet and it lets me do weird stuff like this. I loved writing this book and I love hearing people who have read it come back and tell me it really helped them. And if I can help you, let me know. Leave any comments down below. Uh, find me on Instagram at Refashion Hippie. If there's anything I can do to help you and your business grow, let me know. Last piece of advice, sign up with List Perfectly. List Perfectly is amazing. It's going to help you list faster. It's going to help you sell more, which brings in more money for you. And this video is all about free stuff but sometimes it's worth it to level up and help out your business. I sell twice as much as I did before List Perfectly and they have a great referral program. So with the amount of people that I've referred to it, my plan is free. Um, yeah, love it. So <laughs> you can sign up for the referral plan yourself. You're gonna love it. Uh, if you need a referral code, mine is Refashion or Refashion Hippie. Any questions, let me know. If I can help your business grow, I want to. Okay. Bye guys.